Hey guys, it's Gwinnett. I'm going to be bringing you a special video today. Um, this past week, um, on Monday, we had our, our uh, weekly Monday Popper Deck Challenge. Normally we're playing standard popper, but this week we were doing a popper return to Ravnica block. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed watching this. I am playing um, a, a Grixis build, and this was round two game two of this particular event. Um, unfortunately, in, in all its um, technical prowess, Magic Online only recorded this and one other of my games, so I don't have much to show you, but I thought I would bring you at least this one video so you can get a look-see at how my deck performed. Alright, so, oh, and I'm, I, in the latest update to uh, the client, um, rather than displaying the hand up here, you have this weird little thing where it shows my hand in this little window. Um, so you'll see that throughout here. I'll go ahead and put this up here just so you can kind of keep an eye on it. Um, I personally would prefer to be at the bottom and utilize this space. I don't know why um, the new client is uh, choosing to do these uh, replays this particular way. So, um, like I said, it's game two. I lost game one, so I chose to play first, and I kept my opener, and my opponent kept his opener as well. So obviously with Grixis here, playing uh, all three uh, appropriate guild gates, playing the Rakdos one, the Izzet one, as well as the Demir one. Basic idea of this deck, lots of removal, um, some draw, and, um, and then uh, ride the new Cyclops by playing spells and letting it attack in. So anyway, you'll see how that plays out. Um, it's a fun little deck. Um, I, I don't think it's the best deck that could have been built for this particular format, but it was, I had fun with it. So on my opponent's turn, let's see what he is able to do here. He plays a forest, doesn't really tell me a whole lot here. And I do draw and play a Demir Guildgate. So it looks like my opponent is playing um, green and black. I'm trying to remember what the uh, the color pair is there. I'm sure it'll come to me in just a minute. Uh, anyway, um, does it, but just passes the turn back. And now I've got all my colors and going to lead off with a, a Pilfered Plans. Obviously, it'd be nice if I could find a creature. Um, this deck definitely has a little bit of a mill sub theme and um, really just to power up Death's Approach. If you can get some of their creatures in the yard, having a, a one black mana removal spell is definitely very, very good. Shame it's not an instant, but it would probably be overpowered at that point. So I draw into another land as well as a second Pilfered Plans, and obviously at that point pass the turn back. So my opponent is now on the board with a Croconura, which I am going to go ahead and immediately use Stab Wound on. Um, th another thing that this build is able to do is just kind of sit back and let these uh, stab wounds just drain drain my opponent of all their life. Um, so he loses two, and let's see what he is able to do about it. So he just immediately plays Death Approach to uh, get rid of the Croconura. And that worked because I've milled him and he had a Basilicus creature in the yard. and doesn't have a follow-up turn. So I draw into a Swamp, which I will play. I am running 24 land, so I, you know this deck really wants to hit its land drops pretty consistently. So... I'm going to drop a Prophetic Prism here and hope to draw into something, but unfortunately just draw another land. Um, but here I will go ahead and play out the second Pilfered Plans, um, mill a Stab Wound from my opponent, which is very good, as well as a land. And unfortunately, well, let's see, and I draw into a Frostburn Weird, which is definitely very good. Obviously can't play it this turn, but I'll play it next turn. I'm going to go ahead and move this down a little bit so you can continue to see my lands. So, do a Utah. Let's see what he's able to do. Has a second Croconura. Um, which I can, let's see, one, I think he just, he has the two creatures in there, so I'm not able to death approach it, but I will be able to, uh, to devour flesh it, which I assume is what I'm going to do here. Yeah, so I'll use devour flesh. He does gain three life off the deal, and then I'm able to follow it up with a frostburn weird. Plays a trans guild promenade. I originally was playing some of these, but uh, particularly if you're only playing two colors, I don't really think it's, they're needed. Um, almost rather would use the Prophetic Prism, which I'm only running one of, but uh, it's just a nice little mana fixer. Obviously in this format we don't have the Evolving Wild, so this is kind of you know, maybe the next best thing. Um, the fact that it not only comes into play tapped itself, but makes you tap another land is, is definitely a little painful. So you definitely don't want to run too many of them. Alright, so I'm going to pass the turn, or I'm sorry, he passed the turn back to me without another play. And... I'm going to go ahead and swing in with the Frostburn Weird. I'm going to go ahead and pump it up. Full value, drop them to 17. And then can follow it up with my third Pilfered Plans, and I draw into the Cyclops. So this is kind of my build-around card. 
you know, a 4-4 for 3 is definitely very good. Even, a you know, a Horn Turtle 1-4 with Defender for 3 is, is decent. And then, you know, half the deck, half of my non-lands cards are spells, so I'm able to get a lot of value out of those, particularly if I can get two of them at the board at the same time. And then also playing these Balustrade Spies. Not a card I've really seen uh, anybody play, um, but in black, a 2-3 Flyer is pretty good. And um, if you can get a little incidental value out of the mill, um, can be pretty nice. The only thing I don't like about it is that you guarantee that your opponent won't draw a land in their next draw step. So that's kind of a disadvantage of playing this particular card. And I think almost the entire event when I used it, all I would mill would be a single land. So that's definitely not good at all. So this is what basically this deck is built around. It's, it's built around using uh, these Trestle Trolls um, because they can hold everything back and, you know, just play a defensive game and then follow them up with uh, these stab wounds to, to take down an opponent. It's basically my opponent's game plan here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and swing in here with the Frostburn Weird. Don't expect him to to uh, to want to, to block because I can, you know, we could trade, but the fact that he can't regenerate it means this is a really good good card for him to be surprised. Oh, but he actually does go ahead and block. I was, I was shocked that he did that, but obviously I'm, I'm happy here to trade. Even though I don't have a lot of creatures, getting that Trestle Troll off the board for a free trade plus some mana is something I'm very happy to do, especially since I have lots of mana here. I did draw into another one of these Cyclops, so next turn I'm really going to be able to get some good value out of them. Opponent finds a Gate Creeper, so he'll continue to, to get, some, get some value out of that. Um, now here I could play this Annihilating Fire to uh, ping my opponent with it and then attack with a Cyclops, but I decided to wait and go ahead and get this other one down before I try that. So instead here, I'm just going to go ahead and cast a second Cyclops, as well as the Balustrade Spy. And you will see here, what do I mill? I mill a single land, which, you know, it really is helpful for my opponent because he would have drawn that land. So in retrospect, this may not be the best card simply because you know your opponent's next draw is not going to be a land. Um, you know, paying that, you know, if the card read, you know, flying 2-3 for 4 and your opponent's guaranteed to draw a non-land spell next turn, and that's a pretty big drawback. All right, so he plays a Perilous Shadow. I'm um, good, but you know I'm not sure he's playing enough black to really make this as effective as maybe it could be. It's a very expensive shade. I'll, I'll give it that. So it has a Gatekeeper Vine, plays another Guild Gate. I draw into a Depths Approach here. So basically, with what I've got in my hand, I'm able to get rid of all of these and then hit him with an fi Annihilating Fire and attack with all of them. So that is exactly what I'm going to go ahead and do. We'll kill all these off with the death approach. Annihilating fire, the gate creeper, which, you know, normally it's a pretty terrible play. This certainly is not worth using really good removal on. But the fact that it's going to give me an extra six damage it definitely makes it more than worth it here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, gatekeeper vine has been exiled, and I will attack in here for ten, dropping my opponent to seven. Back on his turn, my opponent has another Perilous Shadow, um, but he's definitely going to need something better than that, and I draw into an Ogre Jailbreaker. This is definitely going to be good for me. A spell would have been nice, really would have let me get a lot of power out of these. Um, he could have done this once, making it a 2-6, so I wouldn't have been able to get in with everything. But I certainly, if I'd drawn a spell, would have attacked with both, because I would have dropped my opponent to, actually it would have killed my opponent, so that would have been really good. Um, but instead, I'll just go ahead and play out the Ogre Jailbreaker here. And pass the turn back. And then on his turn, uh, this was the other thing I discovered about this deck. Is he's playing, I think, a full set of these. And man, when I reviewed this card, I thought, oh, you know, 2-4 for 3 and a green, you know, 7 life, whatever. This card is really good. It just it bumps life so quickly. Going from 5 to 12 and getting a 2-4 out of it, this is a very, very strong card. Really helps you stabilize. My opinion of this card has dramatically changed. It is very, very good. Not amazing, but you know, definitely you know, a, at least a B, I would say, because that, that life gain is just tremendous. Seven life is so much. So obviously, going to play out my next ogre jailbreaker here. See what my opponent able's to do in return. He's got a rubbleback rhino. Um, you know, a three four for five isn't real great, but the hexproof certainly is nice. Keeps removal heavy decks like me from being able to interact with it. And then he uses pit fight to go ahead and take out my balustrade spy with it. Um, interesting enough, he can't actually fight with any of the other ones, at least not profitably. Right back in my turn, draw into an Annihilating Fire, which I'm going to go ahead and use on my opponent, dropping him to 7. 
and activate my Cyclops as well. So it's not every day you get to attack in standard popper with four four fours, but that is exactly what I get to do here. I'm having a little bit of trouble. There we go. So we'll swing in here for 16, um, forcing my opponent to, you know, to block three of them with all his creatures and uh, getting them all off the battlefield. And at this point, I'm in really good shape. Opponent does have a great keeper vine as well as another Cerule Gatekeeper, and once again, he's back up at 10 and back in this game. So if I can draw into a spell, oh, and he also has a death approach to, to kind of lower my Ogre Jailbreaker, although not kill him. If I draw into a Pilfered Plans, obviously just going to go ahead and play that, power up both those Cyclopses, and draw into a Frostburn Weird as well. So I'll swing in here. Uh, opponent, uh, you know, I expected him to block one of the 4-4s four with this, but he's going to go ahead and just eat up this Ogre Jailbreaker which is fine because it means I get to drop him to two. And then next turn I'm going to be in, I shouldn't have any trouble beating him. Drop the Frostburn Weird, even if he's got another Gatekeeper. And at that point he just goes ahead and concedes. So that was that game. Hope you enjoyed watching. Um, you know, look at the write-up. Let me know what you think about the deck. I actually think from playing it that the, the Orzhov Extort deck was, was probably the best deck in, uh, to, to play in this particular event. Uh, but this Grixis build is a lot more fun. Enjoyed it. Had some interesting options, some interesting play. And, uh, yeah, I think I'd do some stuff different if we had another event. But, uh, of course, we will be back to playing Standard Popper this coming Monday. So, anyway, hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time. In closing, let me remind you, you can keep up with all my writings and articles by following me on Twitter at the username Gwynedd42. That's G-W-Y-N-E-D and the number 42. I also regularly publish articles over at PureMTGO.com. Search for me by the username Gwynedd on that site, or find the link in the description of this video. I also maintain a blog now at writeradept.blogspot.com, and you can also find that in the description. Finally, if you enjoyed these videos, please remember to subscribe to my channel and post any feedback or comments. Thanks for watching.